Hello everyone and welcome to today's session on Streamlit. Streamlit is an open source framework which is used to create web apps for machine learning and data science with ease. The best thing about Streamlit is that even though you don't have the basic idea about web development, still you can use Streamlit to create your very first web application. Along with that, it is compatible with the most of the Python libraries. Now, before we go on to today's agenda, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon for regular updates. So now, let's discuss about today's agenda. First, we will be knowing about what is Streamlit. Once we got the idea about Streamlit, then we will see the uses of Streamlit. After understanding what is Streamlit and its uses, we will see how to install Streamlit. Once we know how to do the installation of Streamlit, then we will see the basic functions and input widgets in Streamlit. And at last, we will see the practical implementation of it. Alright guys, so now let's see what is Streamlit. So now, talking about Streamlit, it is an open source framework which is used to create web apps for machine learning and data science with ease. Right? So now let's see the objectives of Streamlit. So, Streamlit can be used to deploy machine learning models. Moving next, let me give you some idea about the popular frameworks in Python such as Zango and Flask which are also used to deploy the model. But using this framework, you should have some basic idea about HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now, when you are using Streamlit, you can create a remarkable application in just a few lines of code, right? And you can also deploy your machine learning model and any Python project with ease and without worrying about the front end. So this is the basic idea about the Streamlit. So after understanding what is Streamlit, now let's see the uses of Streamlit. So now, if I'm talking about the uses of Streamlit, let's take a scenario in which how it can be beneficial for data scientists. So let's suppose if there is a data scientist and if they want to create their own web apps for machine learning and data science. So if they are using other popular frameworks such as Zango and Flask, then they have to get some idea about the web development, right? But here with using Streamlit, there is no prior knowledge of web development is required, right? Moving next, ML model can be deployed easily and quickly. And the last point that we are having that we can create an outstanding applications with just a few lines of code. Along with that, it is also compatible with most of the Python libraries. So these are the advantages or you can say uses of Streamlit. Alright guys, so now after seeing what is Streamlit and its uses, now let's see the installation. So for the installation, I will be using here Anaconda prompt, right? So this is my Anaconda prompt. I will just go here and I will write here pip install Streamlit. It will take some time to install. Let's wait. Right. So here you can see that my package of Streamlit has been already installed. Now if you want to check it whether it's installed or not, then I will just write here Streamlit. Let me write here hello. So once the execution is done, you can see that there will be opening of a new window, right? So here you can see that there is a new window, right? Where it's written welcome to Streamlit. Now we have already installed the Streamlit. Alright guys, so moving next, what I will do here, I will go on the Anaconda Navigator. So just let me write here Anaconda Navigator. Let me open it. Just wait for some more time. So the ID that I will be using for it is Visual Studio. So here you can see that my Anaconda Navigator has been opened. So as I told you that I will be using the ID as VS Code. Let me launch it. So here you can see that my Visual Studio has been opened. Now I'll go to the file. I'll just click here, new file. And let me give you the file name as stream lit. And I'll just write here app.py, right? And let me just click on the desktop. I'll just create a file. All right. So here you can see that my stream lit app file has been created. Now what I'll do here, let me just import here Streamlit. So how to import Streamlit? I'll just write here import Streamlit and I will use alias here. So I'll just write here as and let me write here st. Okay. Now what I will do here. So in Streamlit, we are having some basics function, right? Let me give you idea about some basic functions. So let me give you some idea about Streamlit basic functions. So here we are having some of the functions that are present in Streamlit are title, header, caption, code, latex, markdown, right? So using these functions, we can create a very good web app, right? Now, 
I'll give you the introduction about each of the function once we are into the coding part. Next we are having input widgets. Now what are input widgets? So talking about the input widgets, widgets are the most important user interface components, right? So Streamlit has various widgets that allow you to bake interactivity directly into your apps with buttons, sliders, text inputs and more. So there are a lot of input widgets are there. Some of them are here checkbox, button, select box, slido, radio, time input, right? And there are many more such as date input and etc. We will discuss all these things while doing the practical implementation. So now let's jump into the coding part. All right. So we have already seen that how to import streamlet. So now let's see some functions. So the first function that I will be using is title, right? So title is used to give the title. So if I want to give the title, so what I will do here, I'll just write here st dot title and I'll just write here simply welcome to IntelliPad. Let me save it. So I'll just write here control s. So now what I will do here, I'll just go to anaconda prompt. I'll just write here anaconda prompt. And now what I will do here, since my file has been saved on desktop, right? So we have to go first on desktop. So how to go to the desktop? I'll just write here CD desktop, right? So here you can see that I'm on the desktop. So in the desktop, I'm having my streamlit file name, right? Streamlit app.py, right? But if you want to run it, then you have to write here. First, what you have to write here? You have to write here streamlit. Then you will write here run and whatever the file name is there, you have to write it. And now let me execute this and you can see that congratulations guys. So this is your first web application that you've made using streamlit. So now moving ahead, let's see some more functions. So after giving the title to the app, now what I will do here, I'll just create the header. So let me write here header. Let me zoom it for you. All right, guys, so I have zoomed it. So let me give you the comment also title is nothing, but it is used to add the title of the app. So let me write here. It is used to add the title of an app. Next talking about the header. So if you want to set a header of any section, then we'll be using header. So here what I will do here. I'll just write here st dot header and in header let me write you uh, machine learning and I will just press here control s right so once you have pressed control s go here and refresh it because I have to write here st dot header right now let me save it by pressing control s and I will execute it here and on execution, you can see that I'm getting header as machine learning, right? Now, if you want to write your subheader, so how to create subheader? I'll just write here simply st dot subheader. And I will write here in machine learning, uh, let me write here linear regression. Let me save it and I'll just refresh it. And you can see that as a subheader, I'm getting linear regression, right? Now, after giving header and subheader to the section, if I want to display any information message, so I can use you st.info and let me write here information details, information details of a user. Let me save it and I'll just execute it. You can see that we are not getting anything here because we have already commented it, right? So I will not comment it. I'll just write you information, right? To give information, I'll just write you to give information. Now let me execute this and on execution, you can see that it's giving an error. Let me check it out because we don't have to give you space that is nothing but indentation right 
So on execution, you can see that I am getting my information detail, right? In this color. Now, after giving it, let's suppose if you want to give a warning message, right? So for warning message, let me write you warning message. So for warning message, I will simply write here st dot warning. And I will write you um, come on time or else you will be marked absent. Let me save it and if I'm executing it, you can see that I'm getting a warning right come on time or else you'll be marked absent okay guys let's see some more functions so after giving warning we are having the right function so right function can be used to display text along with the code also in the coding format let me show you so let me write you write function so I'll just write here st dot write let's suppose if I want to write any text so I'll just write I'll just write here simply the employee name. Let me save it and on execution, you can see that I'm getting the text here. Now, as I told you that this function, that is write function is also used for the code, okay, in coding format. So if I'm writing here st.write, let's suppose if I'm writing here range, 50 okay let me execute this so on execution you can see that I'm getting here range 50 right so let me remove you double inverted comma you if you see here that we can see here the range in the coding format right from the 0 to 50 all right so after write function if you want to show the error message all right so I'll just write here error message. So for error message, you can write here st dot error. And in error, I will write here wrong password. Let me save it and execute it. On execution, you can see that you are getting error as wrong password, right? Now next, if you want to display a success message so I'll just write you st dot success and here I'll just write simply congrats you have got a grade let me execute this and you can see that I am getting a success message right that is in the form of the green color so now after understanding this, so now let me use the markdown function. So here I will just write you double quotes inside that double quotes. If I'm writing a hashtag and if I'm writing here in telepath. Now let me show you the execution. I will just once again repeat this markdown one. Okay guys, now let's see the markdown function which is used to set a markdown of a section. So let me comment it down markdown. And now I will simply write here st dot markdown and let me write you. I will just write here intellibat. Let me save it and execute this. So on execution you can see that intellibat has been showing here, right? Now what I will do here, I will just simply write here hashtag. Now you will see the difference here. Now once again if I am executing it, you can see that I am getting here. And delibet, which font size is large right now instead of writing here single hash if I'm writing here st dot markdown function and if I'm writing here double hash and let me once again write here in delibet. let me save it so on execution you can see that there is a difference right but I don't want this so let me give here space let me execute this now here you can see that 
I am using double hash, right? So the font size has been small this time. Now, if I'm writing here three times hash, then you will see the difference. The font size will be more smaller, right? So this is the way to set a markdown of any section. So let's move ahead. So now let's move to the next function. Okay, so before moving to the next function, if I want to print the emoji, then how you can do using the markdown function. So let me write here st dot markdown. And here I will use a moon. So I'll just write here simple moon. And you can see that you will be getting the emoji of moon. Let me save it. And on execution, you can see that you are getting the emoji of moon, right? Okay. Now after this, I'm having text function. So for the text function, I will simply write here st dot text. And here, I'll just write once again, and telepath learners. And you can see that it will give you the print of the text. That is, it will display the text, right? Cool. So after knowing the basic idea about all these functions, now learn some more function. So if you want to write a caption, to write a caption, I will just write here st.caption and inside this caption, I will just write here caption is here. Let me execute this and on execution, you can see that I have already set a caption here, right? So this is a way to write a caption, right? So you can see that guys, it's a very easy, right? If you are using Streamlit, you can create here the front end very easily. Let me give you some more idea. So now if you want to display a mathematical expression, let's suppose then how you can use. So for that, I will be using a latex function. So let me write here to display a mathematical equation. So I'll just simply write here st dot latex. And inside this, what I will do here, first I will write here r and then I will give here three single quotes. And inside that, let me write an equation. I will just write here a plus b. I'll just write here x to the power one. So I will be using this symbol. Or let me give here a plus b x square. So I'll just write here two. Okay. And I will just write here plus and c. And let me close this. Okay, guys. Let me save it and on execution and on execution you can see that I am getting the equation a plus b x square plus c. So this is a way to display a mathematical expression, right? Next, if you want to see how to create an image, right? So for the image what I will do here, let me create image here in front of this before title. So to create an image, I will just simply write here st dot image. But I need an image for this, right? So I'll just go on file and I will write here. First I will select. So on desktop, I'm having an image of IntelliPad. So let me write here IntelliPad. And it's in PNG format. Let me open it. Right? So what I want. So once I have uploaded my IntelliPad file that is in the PNG format. That is nothing but an image file. So I'll just write here in st.image IntelliPad dot png let me save it and when i'm going this website you can see that on execution i'm getting here intellibet right before welcome to the intellibet so this is the logo all right guys moving next let's see some more functions so i think i have covered most of the functions now it's time to understand about the widgets so let me comment it down here widget now so the first widget that we are having is the checkbox. So let me write here st dot checkbox. So in this checkbox, what I will write here, let me write here login. Let me save it. I have to refresh it. And here you can see that I'm getting a login checkbox. Right? So this is a way to create a checkbox. Now, let me comment it down. Checkbox. So now let's see some other widgets. 
So after checkbox, the next widget that we are having is nothing but the button. So as you know that button is used to create a button, right? So let's see how we can create a button. I'll just write here simply st dot button, and inside this I'll just write here uh, click. Let me save it. And on execution you can see that click button we are getting. Now next we are having radio widget. So what is radio widget? Basically it will display a radio button, right? So how to create a radio button? I'll just simply write here. Let me first write here radio widget. So I'll write here st dot radio. And inside this, what I will do here? I'll just write here. Pick your gender. So in gender, now what I will do here? I'll just create a simply list. And in list, I will write here male. And I will write here female. And let me create another element that will I will create your other right so on execution you can see that I am getting a radio button in which is showing the option pick your gender male female other so now after this we are having next is select box so if you want to select a single option then you can use the select box so let me show you let me write here first select box and then I will write here st dot select box and inside this let me write here pick your course and once again what I will do I will create a list and here let me write ML uh, let's take some more courses I will write here cloud and then I will write here cyber security you can take cool let me save it and Execute it. So on execution you can see that it's showing me error. Why? Because I have to write here select box. Now you can see that it's showing pick your course. So here you can see that I'm getting an option of ML Cloud Cyber Security. So I am just selecting here cyber security. So you can see that it has been selected. Right. Now after understanding select box, then we are having multi-select you. So in multi-select you can select multiple options. Let me just write here multi-select. So here let me write st dot multi select. I'll write here let's suppose um, I want to choose a department. So let me write here choose the department and let me create some department. So I'll just create here content. Uh, let me create another one with sales and then marketing. And now I'll execute it so on execution it's asking choose your department I want to choose content if I want to choose sales also I can choose it if I want to choose marketing then also I can choose it and if you want to remove it then you can remove it by clicking on this cross right so this is a way in which you can create a multi select option right now after that we are having select slider now what will select slider will do let me show you So I'll just write here st dot select underscore slider and let me give the rating here. So if I am reviewing anything then I can give the rating right. So uh, let me take your categorical variables I will give the rating as bad. I can give you good. I can give you excellent. Let me give one more. I can also give you outstanding let me save it and execute it so here you can see that you are getting the rating if I am clicking on this and dragging it so you can see that now from bad to good and then good to excellent and excellent to outstanding we can go so this is a way you can create a slider using select underscore slider method next we are also having the slider function so what is the difference between slider view and the select slider I will show you so let's suppose if you want to pick any number so let me write here st dot slider and let me write here enter your number and simply I will give you 0 to let's suppose 
30. Let me save it. And it's asking into your number. So if I'm dragging it, you can see that it's going from 0 to 30. If you want to increase the size, then you can write here 100 also. And let me correct it. Your. Now it's looking better. All right. So you can see that I can drag it from 0 to 100. So this is a slider. Next, we are having number input. So if you want to display a number, then I can use the number input. So let me show you. I'll just write here number input, number underscore input. Now, what I will do here, once again, I will just write here simple st dot number underscore input. And I will just write here, once again, pick a number. Pick a number and let me give you a 0 to 100. Let me save it. And on execution, you can see that it will give you pick your number. So if you are clicking on this plus button, you can see that from 1 to 100, you can choose your number. So basically, this function is used to display a numeric input widget, right? So after understanding number input, now let's see the text input. So let's suppose if you want to ask an email address of any user, so you can use text input. So let me just write you text input. So I'll just write here st dot text underscore input. And inside this, I'll just write here enter your email address. Let me execute this. And on execution, it is asking your email address. So I'll just write you random xyz at the read in telepath.com. Alright guys, now let's see some other widget. So basically text function is used to display a text input widget, right? So now we'll see the date input. So let me write here date input. So if you want to display a date input widget, you can choose this date input. So I'll just write here st dot date underscore input. And inside this I will write here opening ceremony. Right. Let me execute this. And on execution, you can see that it's already showing by default. But if you want to change it, you can just write here. Let's suppose 1997. I'll write. Let me remove this. I just want to change it. 1997. Uh, let's take um, August month. And let's take a date. And if I'm executing, you can see that I'm already getting the August chart of 1997. Right. Cool. So after date input, we are also having the time input, right? So time input will give you the timing. So I'll just write in here time input. And I will just write here sd dot time underscore input. And I will just write hey, what's the timing? And on execution we can see that we are getting the time. So let's suppose if I want to select the time at 2 o'clock. So 2 o'clock will be 14, right? So this is the way on which you can create a time. So after understanding time input, we are having a, another widget that we can use. Let me give you an idea. We are having your text area. So why we are using here text area, let me first write here text area. So let's suppose if you want to print a text more than one line, then you can use this text area. So if I'm writing here st dot text area and inside this I will write you welcome to the IntelliPath website. Hello learners. Okay. And on execution, you can see that we are getting the text area where I've written here, welcome to IntelliPad website, hello learners. So here you'll get the basically the text area where you can write a description. Okay, you can write a huge description here. So now let's see a other widget. So if you want to upload any file, so which function we can use? So for uploading file, I'll just simply write here st.file underscore upload. And I'll just write here, upload your file or I'll just write here folder. Let me save it. And on execution, you can see that it's uh, giving an error. 
why let me check it out because here I have to write here file uploader right this is the correct function so now if I'm executing it so you can see that we are getting the option upload your file and folder so you can just go browse files and here I'm having a lot of file let me go on the desktop I was having one image of IntelliPad right so just click here and open it you can see that it has been uploaded right so up to 200 MB is the limit you can upload any file and folder all right guys so moving next we are having a option of choosing color also so for that I can write here st dot color underscore and I will write here picker and inside this I will just write here color so let me execute this giving color now if you want to select color so how you can select it you can just click here here and then select any color all right let's move ahead now if you want to see the progress right if you are creating any web app and whatever the learners have learned and how much the course they have completed so there will be a track record right so for that you can use the progress so for progress I can write here st dot progress and here let me give the progress as 90 so you can see that on execution the 90 percent of the progress will be why it's giving an error because I have to write here st dot progress let me just execute this and on execution you can see that 90 percent of the progress has been done all right so the next function we are gonna discuss about is the spinner function right so what is the use of this spinner so whenever you're using this function so it will display a temporary waiting message during execution right so whenever you are executing anything so let's suppose if I'm executing this and it will taking a time right so basically it will display a temporary waiting message so let me just show you how it works if I'm writing here st dot spinner and I write here just wait cool but now this function will not work here you have to use you in order to work I'll just write here with and let me import the time also so how to import the time here I'll just write here import time as t so I'm creating an alias right for time so I'll use here t so if I'm writing you let me write here colon I'll write here t dot sleep and now if I'm giving here two so it will take two second to display let me execute this and it's showing an error cause I have to write here import t right so on execution you can see just wait so it has waited for two seconds right if I'm writing here five second then you can check it out see just wait it will wait for five seconds so what is the use of this function as I already told you that it is used to display a temporary waiting message during any execution right now guys we will see an interesting function here so there is a function called balloons right so this function is used to display balloons for celebration so let me show this function so let me write here st dot balloons so it's already displaying let me execute this and on execution okay it is showing an error cause I have to write here balloons let me give the sleep time view for the two second so that shouldn't take much time now on execution you can see that we are having the balloons here for celebration right let me execute once more to show you yeah okay guys all right guys so now let's see the sidebar so let's suppose if you are making any web app and if you want to put anything on the sidebar so how to do it so there is a function that is called st.sidebar that you can use so that your element is pinned to the left side right so let me show you I'll just write your sidebar now what I will do here I'll just write here st dot sidebar and I will just write here let's suppose welcome to IntelliPad so what I have told you about the sidebar so let's suppose if you are using st dot sidebar so whatever the element is there it will pin to the left so let's suppose if I am giving here st dot sidebar dot title right so let me execute this 
let me save this and if I am executing it so on execution you can see that the element has been pinned to the left right welcome to the IntelliPad so let me just write here IntelliPad only now what I will do here I will just write once again st dot sidebar and dot now instead of title this time I will just write here text underscore input I can write you enter your mail address or I will just write your mail address let me execute this so you can see that yeah after the celebration of balloons that mail address is asking right so what I will do here I will take one more text input so let me just copy this and I will paste it to you and this time I will just write here password so I'm doing nothing but using the same code text underscore input after using the sidebar so here I'm getting mail address and password now I can create the button also so for button also if I want to create then once again I have to write here st.sidebar because I want to create everything on the left side right so I'll just write you dot button and let me give you the submit option so you can see that I can write here my mail address xyz at the rate intellipad.com password you can also write dfg or something and you can put on the submit button also right so this is the front end part that we can create using streamlit next if you want to create the radio button then you can also create it okay let me show you st dot I'll just write your sidebar dot radio and let me write here professional expert I'll just write you student in the list and let me create your working professional so I'll just write your working let me save it so here you can see that I've created a radio button so when I'm writing a professional expert if you want to add more option then I can write here others also so this is very simple guys right you can create a front end in an easy way using this all right you can select anyone now after understanding the widgets and the basic functions about streamlit now we can see the data visualization thing so I'll just comment it down the data visualization so for the data visualization the library that I will be using here pandas so I will be writing here import pandas as pd right now let me give here the title let's suppose if I want to create a bar chart so I'll just write here st.title and I'll just write here simple bar chart okay guys now what I will do here let me create a data frame so how you can create a data frame I'll just write here simply pd dot data frame and let me use numpy also so how to import numpy I'll just write here simply import numpy as np so what I will do here I'll create here np dot I'll be using here random dot random function so I'll just write here random and I want to create here let's suppose 50 records and 4 columns or let me create here two columns first let me write here okay 50 records is fine so I'll just simply write here columns and I will just write here x and y so these are the columns name that I'm assigning all right and let me store into this data right now how to show a bar chart right in our streamlit so there is a function that is st dot bar underscore chart right so I'm using a function here bar underscore chart and inside this I will just write my variable data and let me execute this so on execution you can see that so here is showing error cause I have to write here title that's why it's showing there is no type library just wait for it and clearly here you can see that we are getting a very beautiful bar chart right so now if you want to zoom it or zoom out you can do it right cool guys so after understanding bar chart let's suppose if you want to create a line chart so for creating line chart let me just replace the bar chart with line chart here and now here I'll just write here st dot line underscore chart and I will write you once again data right inside this and let me execute this 
So on execution, you can see that I'm getting bar chart, line chart. Now, if you want to draw the area chart, then also you can do it. Let me just copy this title and I will replace it with the area chart. And the same thing, instead of line, I have to just simply write here area. So you can see that we are having easy functions here, right? So these are some easy functions you can implement it to see the data visualization. You can see that I'm getting the bar chart, line chart, area chart, right? All right, guys, that's it for the session. If you like the session, please do subscribe, share, and like. Thank you. If you want to make a career in data science, then IntelliPath has IIT Madras Advanced Data Science and AI Certification Program. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by IIT professors and industry experts.